this is Al Anglo, A Plus Racing, coming back at you. I got a question the other day from one of my subscribers, and his name was Alex. Alex or Nay, I believe it is. And he asked me about getting a car dyno. He wanted to know if I had a dyno and if I would make a video on how the dyno works. I'm sorry, buddy, I don't have a dyno. I do have my car's dyno, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how to prepare your car to go to the dyno, okay? But before I can tell you how to prep your car to go to the dyno, let's find out why do we go to the dyno in the first place? Well, we want to squeeze out every bit of legal, it's kind of funny when I say that, legal horsepower that we can out of our spec Miatas, or maybe even your street car. Now, a Miata doesn't put out a lot of power. I mean, the average Miata is probably 110 to 115 horsepower, maybe 95 foot pounds of torque. So we have to understand some things here before we go to the dyno. So um, I'm going to tell you what they are. All right. So the first one, let's just take that number of horsepower and torque. So what is the difference between horsepower and torque? So there's a big difference. And actually, me personally, I'm more interested in torque than really I am about the horsepower. Okay. So like behind me is a, or behind you, there is a concrete wall. All right, and um, here in my classroom, there's a concrete wall. If I was to take a BB gun, all right, and shoot it at that concrete wall, and that BB was traveling at 800 feet per second, and it hit that concrete wall, and it bounced off and it would rattle around here. Heck, I'd probably shoot my eye out. Get it? Shoot my eye out, Ralphie. All right, so that would be a BB. If I was to able to throw a Sherman tank at that wall at 800 feet per second, what would happen when the Sherman tank hit that concrete wall? It would obliviate the wall, all right? That's the energy. That's the torque, okay? So the torque is the energy when it hits something, and then the horsepower was getting it there and what it did to the wall. But now the BB didn't have a lot of torque, so it just bounced right off. So that's kind of the difference in horsepower and torque. Now, if you looked it up in the dictionary, it would tell you the horsepower is, is some type of lifting a certain weight at a certain speed, a certain distance off the ground, and they calculated that to be one horsepower. All right. Know that Miata's typically around 115 horsepower, and that's if it's a good one. If it's a 1.6, that's a pretty good engine. So horsepower, you're going to be reading horsepower and torque on the dyno. So we want to get the most out of it that we can safely. Now, so in order to figure this out of what they're going to do to dyno, they're going to adjust the timing, all right, if it is adjustable. So, and, and as I'm making this video, I'm thinking of all these ways that I could go into explaining to you everything it takes for me to take a car to the dyno. And I'm thinking like, okay, that's two videos, three videos, four videos. So the timing can be adjusted, all right? Now, if you've got a vehicle that is prior to 1995, it has a cam angle sensor. So Miata's prior to 95, a cam angle sensor because they're OBD-1. OBD-1 was a primitive type of uh, fuel injection programming that we used, all right? And then there was a, an area between 1991 and 1996 where everything started moving to OBD-2, which is the new style, the newer style um, programming on how the... The computer system works. So 95 was the last year for a Miata that it was OBD1. So you can adjust the timing, all right? Um, if it is a 1.6 car, which was made until 93, the way that we adjust the air fuel mixture is in the vein meter. They actually pop off that little black cap and they mess around with the springs inside there and they can adjust the, the, the fuel uh, consumption of the vehicle. So that is what we primarily adjust on a 1.6 car. So 1990, 93, we can move the timing and we can move the air fuel ratio a little bit through the vein meter, okay? I got, I got to tell you, I'll be honest with you here, not that I've ever lied to you, but when they do the vein meter, um, sometimes the idle doesn't come out right. It kind of bounces around or it idles really high, you know, or it doesn't idle at all, you know, so you can end up, having a problem put it on pause now so on that one six adjusting that air flow meter that's what you're going to do to adjust the air fuel ratio the ideal air fuel ratio across the board is 14.7 to 1 so i wrote it right there 14.7 to 1 okay that's the ideal air fuel mixture across the board all right we try to get as close to that as possible if anything a little bit of richer 
So what this means is that it is going to be 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. All right, That's our ideal air-fuel ratio. So that's what we're trying to get to. That's going to deliver us the best power across the board. So in order to understand how we get that, because there are some ways to manipulate that. Like I said, on the 1.6, it's going to be through the vein meter. On a 94 um, and up, it's going to be using an adjustable fuel pressure regulator valve. And I'm going to explain all that here in a minute. So, yeah, I'm in class. And it's, it's, it's actually, I got a break right now. So, um, but first I want you to know how the fuel system works. So you know how we manipulate it to get the most power out of the car. All right. And Alex is, I'm sorry, it's a long process in this, but I want you to know how we do it because it is beneficial. All right. I've drawn a common fuel system here on the board. Okay. And I'm not the best speller and I'm not an artist. I don't teach art. I teach auto. And so let me explain to you how this works because it's actually very simple once you can understand what these components do. So inside of the gas tank, yeah, inside there is the, is the fuel pump. Luckily on a Miata, it's got a little trap door on that package tray that you just take off, you know, six or seven little Phillips screws and it's right there. So you don't have to drop the tank or anything like that. A lot of vehicles, you got to drop the tank, pain in the ass. So the fuel pump is inside of the gas tank. And the fuel pump is capable of producing 100 pounds of fuel pressure. So we'll just, we'll just go here and say it can make 100 LBS of fuel pressure. So the fuel pump is going to come on. It picks up the fuel through a sock um, on the fuel pump. <clears throat> kind of catches big debris. And then it goes over. The first stop, it goes to the fuel filter. Okay, From the fuel filter, it's going to go to the injection rail. We're going to pass the fuel pressure port right here. So this is a fuel pressure test port that we actually hook up a fuel pressure gauge and read what the fuel pressure is going to be. We go into the injector rail. We have our injectors right here. And this is a critical part, the fuel pressure regulator valve. Okay, And it's on the rail. So what this does is it regulates the amount of fuel we're going to send back to the gas tank. So in order for the Miata to run, it needs about, we're going to use our test port here, 45 pounds of fuel pressure. Okay. Now I already told you the fuel pump can put out 100. So we're going to send back a great deal of that pressure back to the gas tank through the fuel pressure regulator valve. So here's how the whole thing kind of works. So the computer opens and closes the injectors. All right. If the computer says we always have 45 pounds of fuel pressure in the rail because we're sending back whatever we don't use through the fuel pressure regulator valve. It knows that if I open the injector for a certain amount of time, that a certain amount of fuel will come out of the injector because it knows how much flow these injectors can produce and it knows what the fuel pressure is behind them. So opening it up for like a second, even though that never happens. So open it up for one full second will be the equivalent of so much fuel coming out of the injector. You kind of see what I'm talking about? So the way we manipulate how much fuel we want the engine to have is by manipulating the fuel pressure regulator valve. The computer doesn't know what the fuel pressure is. It only knows that it's opening up the injector for a certain amount of time, and it thinks that the car is at 45 pounds. So by, install by installing an adjustable fuel pressure regulator valve, we can fine tune this engine to that 14.7 across idle, intermediate, and wide open throttle, okay? So that we can get that ideal fuel mixture and that's how we're gonna make the most amount of power. So a lot of times when you go to a dyno shop, they're mainly gonna be dealing with what's the fuel ratio at, all right, at different RPMs. And that's how they're gonna gain more horsepower. Now, what they do need from you at the dyno is they need for you to have a bun installed in the exhaust. So it's the same as the O2 sensor hole. So you know you unthread the O2 sensor and you got a hole about that big. Okay, You can buy those at any parts store. You drill a big hole in the exhaust closer to the header, weld that in there, and it comes with a plug so you're not running it open like that. It comes with a plug. You take the plug out. They're going to put their air fuel meter reader from the dyno in there so when they're dynoing the car, they can monitor what the fuel ratio is. 
and then they're going to make adjustments. So if you have a an NA16, they're going to adjust it through the vein meter. If you have a NA18 or an NB, then you're going to buy an adjustable fuel pressure regulator valve, all right? And then they're going to adjust it like that. Now, to kind of simplify it right here, this came out of a 5.0 Mustang. So if you look at this line coming in right here, you can see it has a port. And then it goes into the injector radio. So this tells you right now that this is my feed. This is my feed going right here. Okay. Then it goes through the injector rail and we come out to over here. That's right. That's the fuel pressure regulator valve. And then attached to the fuel reg pressure regulator valve is the return line that goes back to the gas tank. So, and this has eight injectors. So it's exactly like what I just showed you. And a lot of cars are this way. Actually, most cars are configured like this. So this is where I'd be putting in my fuel pressure uh, tester if I wanted to test to see if it had sufficient fuel pressure. Hey man, it just got to mind. Just, I just thought of this. Here's another big problem with Miatas. If you got a Miata and you're like constantly, like if I go to Thunder Hill, I can turn 208s, 210s on a pretty regular basis. If for some reason the car seems like it's fallen off, like it, like it falls off to like 212s, 216s or whatever, it's like, man, I'm trying my hardest. I can't get out of it. It can be your fuel pressure, all right? And this is what I've done. I put a fuel pressure tester on here. And although it says 45 pounds and everything is great, okay, we know that the fuel pump can put out 100, right? So if I pinch off the return line, if I pinch this off so there's no return, that means I'm going to be running the maximum fuel pressure through the rail. When I do that, I better be seeing 80 pounds, okay? I got to see 80 pounds. If I don't see 80 pounds, like some of them I've seen 60, that means I'm only getting 60 pounds for wide open throttle, and that's not enough fuel at wide open throttle. So the car is starving for fuel at wide open throttle. So it is a test that I do on my cars periodically. I put a fuel pressure tester on there. I start it up. I pinch off the return line, and I, I better see that gauge go up to 80. If it doesn't, that means my fuel pump is weak. I replaced the fuel pump. Man, it was like I had a brand new car. I stepped on the gas and boom, it took off. Okay, So watch for that on your Miatas. You've got a bad fuel pump. It'll still run fine. And on street cars, when you drive it on street, you'd never know it. But in a race car where we run right open throttle most of the time, you'll feel it. Okay, so now we know that on an NA16, they're going to adjust the um, airflow meter, okay, the vein meter, in order to get the power for the 14.7 to 1. If you have a 94 and newer, you're going to need to buy the adjustable fuel pressure regulator valve in order for them to adjust it. Now, I have put the adjustable fuel pressure regulator valve on an NA16, and it didn't do any good. It just, it's, you either adjust one or the other, but you don't adjust them both, okay? I have put them on there, but you know those, those adjustable fuel pressure regulator valves, they're like $300 and up. The one on the NBs, and they're like $500. So if I don't have to spend $500 on my inspect me on it, I'm not going to. So I'll just have them adjust the, the vein meter. So on a 1.6, you're going to adjust the vein meter. On a 1.8, you're going to buy an adjustable fuel pressure regular valve, and they're going to keep tweaking it. On the timing, they'll move the timing up. They'll do some pulls on it to see if it increased in power, and they'll come back down, and they'll finally get a balancing. I don't like setting the cars up for maximum, maximum on the fuel pressure and the timing because on hot summer days, it can cause the engine to, to blow up, to burn up. So normally when I have them dyno, I said, go ahead and dyno, give me the most power as you can. But this car has to be, you know, I'm going to enter this car in a 25-hour Thunder Hill. We're going to run 25 hours. It's got to last the whole time without having a failure. All right. So that's this portion of what to expect when you dyno your car. And then on the next section, which I'll start here in a few minutes, is that I'll take you out to the shop and I'll show you the different fuel pressure regulator valves on the different types of vehicles. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back at you here out in the shop and I've got a 2000 Miata here. It's an, an MB18. And if we look here in the trunk, you can see the fuel pressure regulator valve right here. And it's adjusted with this Allen right here. I add this little fuel pressure gauge just so I kind of know what the fuel pressure is at. And then this is a test port for checking the fuel. If you're building a spec Miata, you have to have a test port. So they call that the test port. And so this is what the adjustable fuel pressure regulator valve 
looks like for an NB. Oh, this, I keep all my money in here. If you didn't catch the earlier video, this is the bag I use in order to put the logbooks for the car so I don't lose the logbooks because I'm not that bright. So I just use these, but that's what that is. All right, we're going to walk over and look at a 94 NA18, and you'll see the fuel pressure regulator valve on that one. Come with me this way. Yeah, we got to work through these tires. We got the rising sun car over here. Yeah, you, you guys all go that way. I'll go this way. <clears throat> okay, so this is a 94 NA18, all right? And this is the fuel pressure regulator valve for it. And so as you can see, it's different than the other one. And so here's my fuel pressure. I have a fuel sample port right underneath this little Schrader valve right here. It's adjustable right here. It taps into the fuel line right here. And so uh, that's for an NA18, all right? So they are different. And I, I, this is the best way to adjust this fuel. I, I think it's the only way of doing it. Anyways, I hope that answers your question. Um, I'll do another video when we actually go to the dyno. I got a couple cars going to 25 hour. And uh, I'll do a video from there, but it might be another month or so. Um, but I want to thank you for watching the video. Alex, I hope this helped you out, buddy. If it didn't, give me another message back and we'll change it up for you. So once again, I, if you liked the video and it was informative, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, what's the hold up? Subscribe to my channel. All right. And if you got any questions about Spec Me Honor or Street Me Honor or anything like that, by all means, hit me up. I'd be glad to answer them. Glad to make a video about it. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you at the racetrack. Bye now.